Welcome back to On Coffee. My guest theory is Giuseppe Sarfi, a medical oncology resident from Switzerland. Welcome, Giuseppe, to On Coffee. It's my pleasure to talk with you. Thank you very much. It's also my pleasure to be here with you at ESMO 2025. So, Giuseppe, uh, I want to ask a question, but I, uh, I think I know the answer. As, as I had a lot of Italian guests, I want to ask what is your favorite type of coffee? <laughs> so, I will yeah, go for it. Let me guess. Is it espresso? So, I, I would say I'm a very different type of Italian. Oh. Because I really like iced lattes. I think you won't get it from any other Italian. Yes, like all of them says straight espresso. There is no other choice. So I, I hope they won't uh, cancel you <laughs> before you go But sometimes, yeah, I also like I, iced coffee. In Armenia, we have lots of iced coffee uh, and in the summer. Uh-huh. Like it's it's really a good way to cool down. So I'm really fond of iced coffee. And I'm frustrated that there are some countries that don't, they don't sell ice coffee. No, I feel like in Italy it's very tough to find one. So uh, In Italy, I, I, I'd, I'd never uh, ask for uh, ice coffee because maybe they'll hear me. <laughs> That's why I moved to Switzerland. <laughs> yes. So, um, this is your first decimal? Yes. And how do you feel about it? I feel... I'm way more excited than I was before coming, and I was already quite excited. I think it is surprisingly insightful, meaning that I was, of course, expecting all these new trials shaping the clinical practice. I was not expecting, probably it was to be expected, but I didn't know that there were all these educational sessions that not only tell you things that, as a medical oncologist, you should know, but they go very much in depth to single details of some areas of your cancer focus and they really dig up some little unknown papers and put them together to really give you a new perspective on things and I think that's the most interesting part I found of this and the clinical trials very cool the educational sessions I think they were mind-blowing inspiring that's great I'm really happy that you were having a good time here That's nice. My next question would be, why you moved from Italy to Switzerland? Okay, that's a very good question. I think Italy is beautiful. And doing medicine in Italy and doing medical oncology is probably a great choice. I think they have every every one of us at ESMO for sure. No centers in Italy that do great oncology. Uh, There's multiple reasons. I think sometimes every one of us wants to maybe experience a new country. Sure, Switzerland is very close. On the other side... The oncology residents in Switzerland have a very good connection with preclinical research. So they convinced me with this PhD, 50% PhD, 50% residency program, which I think it's a, you can find that in some European countries and in Switzerland too. And they have good research programs and they do great prostate cancer in doing so and so. <laughs> That's great. But I guess it would be really, really hard to. PhD and residency together. How do you manage to do that? So, in relation to this question, uh, I would want to say that another great event we had they had at ESMO is this Young Oncology events, uh, which is also a good way to relate with people our age and to ask them these kind of questions. I realized that in many different countries, there's different ways to get into preclinical and translational research during your residency. And I agree, there's multiple struggles. And... Sometimes I was advised, for example, from my professor to start with a couple years of full-time clinical work to become a good doctor and also maybe get some new questions for research and then get into research. But I would say I've met people that have done their PhD first and then moved back to clinical research with no issue. So I think the best thing is to probably talk to as many people as possible and find your own path. Yes, I also got some opinions uh, about that. Most of my professors are telling me first to do PhD because now I'm young and my brain is working right. better than it would be in several years later. But also uh, there are some who says to do the clinical than PhD. So I don't know now. And the, uh, but no one told me to do it together because they say like it's really, really hard to do both together. So... Uh, I don't know yet. Well, I think there's no right answer, yeah. but each one of us probably has one of these three options as is preferable. Yeah. 
So uh, I hope I'm going to try and see uh, what is the best option. If you meet inside, you can come to us or Young Oncologist in here. There. Uh, that's right. And my last question would be, what advice would you give to medical students uh, who want to become an oncologist? That is a very good question. The first answer I would give is to go into the oncology ward and to go see patients in the outpatient facilities, preferably on their own with one doctor so they have the most exposure possible. And I think the first thing you need people, probably a lot of people that I meet in the oncology residency, they at the beginning have not fully understand how outpatient oncology actually is. So they struggle a bit with the fact that there's a lot of like planned activity and there's not a lot of rush a lot of times. And then, of course, the psychological part of it, I think, before getting into oncology, people need to get used to it. After that, research, do some research and enjoy oncology. I, I think it's lovely. That's great. Thank you so much for your advice and thank you for being here. It, it was my pleasure talking with you uh, and I wish you uh, success uh, in your personal life and uh, also professional life. I hope you're going to uh, succeed both your PhD and clinical training uh, without any barriers. So uh, good luck. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.